session, we're going to have a look at how my LaTeX workflow is set up, how to create a LaTeX document, how to manage it, how to cite, um, and some nifty little tricks that I've picked up along the way. So just a preamble, I'm not a LaTeX expert. This is just the way I do it and the way that uh, I feel I could share with some others. All right, so to start off, especially if you're working on an Apple device, I would spare yourself all the tears and trouble as to trying to set up the tech by yourself by using the standard documentation. And I just go ahead and purchase the app called TextPad. You can either purchase it direct through the App Store or you could go ahead and purchase it directly from their website. Now, the only thing that I would advise is if you foresee yourself using custom packages, um, you may want to avoid buying it directly from the App Store as there are certain limitations uh, with regards to how apps registered with the App Store can access files on the Apple ecosystem. So buying it directly from their website will allow you to circumnavigate those problems. You'll be able to use standard packages. But for the most part, 90% of the things you would need to use it for, you can download it direct from, from the, the Apple Store. Um, and if you do need to use those custom packages, TextPad does provide a way of sort of a hack, if you will, of being able to, to circumnavigate that as well. All right, so once you've actually gone and purchased or got your text pad, to open it up is quite simple as you usually would. Just go ahead and open it as you usually would. Um, here you would then go and either locate the file, noting of course that you need to explicitly set access to the specific area or location, part of whole Apple's sort of security measures that they've put in place. So what I also recommend is uh, to download on this GitHub repo over here. You can go ahead and download the specific LaTeX files. And from there, you'll just have a nice starting point. Uh, but typically you'll notice a LaTeX file by it having a .txt extension. So once you've downloaded the file successfully, you can then just go ahead and double click, opening it and LaTeX should then be, or TextPad should then be your default editor that you can then use to go ahead and edit it. Now, this sort of format that we used over here is a format that has been sort of rigged with the Department of Industrial Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Um, this is not, as we said, the be all and end all, but this is just the one that we use most commonly. If you haven't used LaTeX before and looking at the screen the first time, it may seem a little bit intimidating, but think of it as using Microsoft Word, but without any of the coding stuff or the formatting stuff happening in the back end. Here, you have to explicitly state it. So the typical structure of a LaTeX or a TextPad document is you'll start off with your document class, which basically tells LaTeX, you know, what are you dealing with here? Are we dealing with a report? Are we dealing with a um, article, et cetera, et cetera. And this will basically change how all these headings appear, the nature of the, um, the oh, I've lost my train of thought, your table of contents and a number of other things in the actual document. So play around with some of the formats that come with LaTeX um, very interesting to get to get a look into all of that. But for the most part, I would just use the packages that we've already specified here. They're pretty common. Um, and you can get all of that direct from your from the GitHub Reek Pro that I'll link in the description below. Uh, one thing you may want to note over here is this new command is used to add comments between you and your supervisor if you need to do that. So you can just go ahead and change that name to whatever your supervisor would be and then your initials as well to whatever your initials need to be. Cool. So for the most part, actually formatting things in LaTeX, um, you can use a number of different sort of formats, I want to call it that. Over here, by using forward slash section, you will then be able to instantiate a uh, first section title. Now just get familiar with what you need to use because there are also chapters, there's sections, there's subsections, there's sub subsections. So there's a number of different ways you can go about actually formatting it and this needs to coincide with the actual document purpose itself. All right, but again, relating this back to how Microsoft Word would work, you would typically then go and click on a body of text and then apply in the top corner over here some sort of formatting outcome or formatting uh, style, if you will, and then that would initially inherit some sort of characteristics. In LaTeX, you explicitly define that in your actual code that you input into here. We can see as well, if we see under texted over here, and I click on command and I click on the word, it'll take me to where it is in the PDF. This will go and change it to italics. So text, IT, and the IT for italics over there. 
Similarly, if we want to use references, we would have to explicitly state it. And if we want to use bold, so there's a number of other commands that I would highly recommend just taking a Google and getting used to. Inserting images, I always find slightly frustrating to say the least. Um, for the most part, I would then just copy and paste this code over here. It seems to be the most stable one that we've used in the past. I'd specify as well with the width being 15 centimeters. So this means that make the width as big as the page. And then I ensure that my fonts and everything in the picture, I've already pre-formatted to, to be as close to the actual fonts in the document and the size of the document as possible. Um, so here, for example, we've imported the picture as a PDF. Now to understand this sort of reference over here, we need to understand the folder structure. So here we've got two dots and then a forward slash, which means go up and then image and then go into the image folder and then look at this resource allocation PDF. So if we have a look at where I've actually housed this in, we're currently in this folder here. If we use that forward slash, we're going up and then we're selecting image and then we're drilling down. And when we're in that here, we've selected the same image and we're importing it. So that's sort of how you would navigate. There is a way in your preamble here that you can specify the root folder of your images. So you don't need to specify uh, this every single time. You could then just go and use this as your root folder and then just declare resource allocation or PDF as your main image over there. Also be sure to include captions as well as labels. Labels you'll then use in another area of the document to actually refer to. So here, for example, I've said uh, in figure, let's have a quick look in figure one, right at the bottom over here. And if I click on the one, because it is a reference, it'll then go ahead and well, it should take me to my main figure over here at the bottom. The next thing, of course, is to start talking about citations. Now, there are two citations that you need to be very aware of in LaTeX. The first is the site P, P command and the site T command. So the site P is, I think, the parenthetical or something like that. Basically, it says, put it in parentheses like this. And the site T command means refer to this author directly. So if we had to use site P, for example, we'll go and say, uh, for example, over here, which is explored in the context of the hotel and airline industry. So this author here is where I got that information from. But if I want to say that this author explored certain categories in the airline industry, I would have to then go explicitly say a site T command. You'll note if we remove T and P and just use site, that it also works. However, this is not really good practice. It doesn't show that you understand when you need to use the author or you need to cite the author in an explicit and intentional way. So on the topic of citations, I have a fairly cool workaround about how I do my citations. The first thing to note is you define your citation file right at the end of the document uh, under bibliography. And you'll see here we specify this bib file. So if I open up my folder structure again, and I go to LaTeX, and I double click on bib, here is our bibliography. You can go and specify this the old fashioned way by typing it out, but I prefer to use some of the built in tools that Google provides. So if we go to Google Scholar, for example, and I go and I type in airline ticket pricing, okay, and we get some book or a, an author or whatever it might be. What I can then do is if I hover over this little sort of uh, apostrophes over here, I can then open up the site options. And then very conveniently, we have a bib text option. So what I would then do is just hit that button, copy this, go back into my actual bibliography file, and then go and add a new entry into my bibliography. Just Bear in mind of this naming convention over here because this is what you will use when you need to refer back to it in your actual document. So double clicking on this, I'll then copy it. And if we return to our document, which should be there, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So then I just need to get that back over here. Uh, and how we do that, so I just need to go back to subfiles. We'll then go to Let's return back to our structure at the beginning of the document here. Under my introduction, I'm going to forward slash, or sorry, wrong one, site P, 
P or site T rather, because we want to explain this guy is directly involved. I'll paste that author name over there, end it up, and then maybe type some stuff over here. Command T. Let's quickly see what's going on there. If we type something there. Oh, okay. So an important thing, we didn't save our bibliography file over here. So let's go back and open up that bibliography file. I'm going to save it now. Control S. And let's return back to our structure over here, beginning of the document. Control T, Control T. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, that's why I'm using site text instead of just site T over here. And by doing that, all of a sudden now it'll work and we'll have our reference. It'll then automatically categorize in the bottom over here. So it really does give you flexibility and it really is lovely to handle references. So again, run through that process. We'll head on over to Google Chrome. We'll go ahead in Google Scholar and type in whatever article, or whatever book, um, Let's say Guardians of the Galaxy. And okay, there's an analysis of it, but let's just go ahead and cite this one over here. Bub text, drag it all, Command C or Command A, Command C. Head back to your bibliography, subfiles, open up the bib, scroll to the bottom or wherever you want to publish it over here. Paste it, save it, then make sure we save it. And we return back to our beginning of our document. Let's just use that as an example. And I forgot what it was, so I'm just going to paste the whole thing. Copy that part over there. And let's try a different one. Site P, or parenthetical. And you'll see right now it's a question mark over here. And then we'll just hit Command T and there we go. It'll refresh and then make and join the link. So nice and nifty and dandy. And of course, if you want to change anything in the citation over here, you can go directly into your bibliography file and actually edit the information over here. All right. So this is sort of my general way of moving around and navigating. Uh, maybe something to note is how tables are structured. Um, I would definitely just go ahead and either use this as a standard template or do some research into how this whole thing works over here, as well as putting or setting your equations into sort of alignment boxes. We'll see over here what I would typically do is this double and is what you use to make a new column just as you would in a table. And I use that to separate and break it up so that this sort of for all uh, as an element of T is explicitly described in this end bit over here. All right. So this is my overall sort of very brief, or if I can call it a brief summary. I hope it helps. And if you'd like to see more, just hit a like and put something in the comments below. Thanks. Have a good one.